find the remaining measurements of the triangle or triangles. When alpha, this angle is 20 degrees, this side length A is 23 feet, and the side length B is 30 feet. Well, we're actually going to have two triangles here. This is called the ambiguous case because if you were to drop down a line here and call this H, you would find this H, you could solve it by saying sine of 20 degrees, I'll write it down, sine of 20 degrees equals H over 30 because this is 30 and for this triangle that I've formed here with this uh, height of H, uh, this angle is still 20 degrees and this side length is still 30, but now we could find H to be, it's about 10.3 feet, just rounding there. Well, it's, it's less than what A is, and, uh, and A is less than what B is, so if A is in between those two, you can swing this like a fence gate. This line, I'm going to put it in red here, you can swing this out or back in. And so you've got two possible triangles there. And I'm going to just sketch those real quickly. So the, the, the big one that I just drew with the way it looks right there that was already there, just like that. And you've got this 23 feet and the 30 feet and the 20 degrees. And then what you're looking for, you're looking for this uh, angle, I'll call it angle gamma 1, sub 1, because we're going to have another triangle, and I'll call this angle over here, angle beta sub 1, and this side length I'll call C sub 1, because it's going to be longer here than, and then in the other example, the other triangle, where we swing the fence gate in, and now, Everything's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to have to use some arrows, but I still have this side length of 30, and I still have this angle of 20 degrees. Um, this side length is still 23 feet. I've got gamma sub 2. I'll call it gamma sub 2. It's going to be different than gamma sub 1 in this, this new green triangle, and also beta sub 2. I'll call this angle, and we also have C sub 2. That's this side length. It's shorter than, than in the other triangle. Okay, let's run through this. I'm going to go kind of quickly, try to anyway, um, just in the interest of time, so the video doesn't get too long, but you can stop it and rewind it if you need to. So we've got sine of 20 degrees over 23, over its opposite side, this is the law of sines, equals the sine of beta sub 1 over its opposite side of 30. I'll multiply each side by 30, and I get 30 multiplied by sine of 20 degrees over 23 equals sine of beta sub 1. Okay, well, how do we find this angle? So we're saying sine of what angle equals all this stuff, and that's us using the inverse of sine. So inverse sine of all of this stuff, and absolutely you could just evaluate this and then take the inverse sine of, of what you you get hang on to all of your decimal places so you don't get a, an errant answer but that will equal beta sub 1 so beta sub 1 we find that's equal 26.5 degrees and by the way if you haven't found it already that inverse sine button is usually just above the sine button you use a second feature or, or something like that to to access that inverse sine okay um, what else do we need to find? We need to find gamma and C sub 1. Well, gamma can be found. Gamma sub 1 can be found by saying, hey, that's 180 degrees minus the other angles that we've used up. So minus the 20 degrees minus the 26.5. So gamma sub 1 equals, well, we have that as 133.5 
degrees. All right, that's two things that we're looking for. The third thing we need is uh, C sub 1. So we can keep going with that. Law of sines, that's sine of 133.5 degrees over C sub 1 equals, let's use the ones that are not rounded, the sine of uh, 20, sine of 20 degrees over its opposite side of 23. I'm not going to show the solving of this one. I'm just going to, in, in the interest of space as well, I'm just going to write C sub 1 equals about 48.8 feet. Okay, we have solved that triangle, the one in red. Now in green, let's see if I can fit some of this stuff in there. I'm going to do my best. So bear with me. In green, we have, uh, we're going to run through the same stuff. We're going to say sine of 20 degrees over 23 is sine of beta sub 1. But wait a minute. We can, we can figure something out here. We can say that if... Uh, gamma, gamma sub 1 is 133.5 degrees. Or let's look at beta sub 1. Let's, let's look at that one. Beta sub 1 is um, 26.5 degrees. Well, we got that by using the inverse sign, but look at this. In this unit, or just in this circle here, if this were 26.5 degrees and we took the sine of that, we would get the exact same value for sine if we took the sine of this angle. So that this angle in orange, this beta sub 2, that's right here, beta sub 2 is going to be uh, the the supplementary angle, you could call it, that's the 180 degrees, because we're not going all the way around, 180 degrees, minus that 26.5, because this little angle is still 26.5. Let's put that in a different color. This little angle is still 26.5, same as this over here. But we're looking for this, this big orange angle. So 180 minus this 26.5. So now we know that, let's put it in green here, beta sub 2 equals the, think fast here, 153, 153.5 degrees. So we've got one of those angles for the, the green triangle. Okay, let's run through then and find gamma. So I better do it down here. We've got uh, gamma, gamma is going to be found by just subtracting. We know two angles, so gamma sub 2 equals that 180 degrees in a triangle minus the 20 degrees used minus the beta sub 2 of 153.5 degrees. And again, this is, this is just, um, it's not playing the trick that we did up here with making the big angle or not. It's just... 180 degrees in a triangle. So if you have 180 degrees total and you've used up 20 and 153.5, then here's what you're going to have left for gamma sub 2. You have, for gamma sub 2, only 6.5 degrees. So how did I sketch that triangle? Okay, it's, it's a little more drastic than that. The 6.5 degrees would make that a little bit smaller. It would look a little smaller, but we're doing okay. So we've got gamma sub 2. All right, the last thing we need is C sub 2. Now, now we can use the law of sines. We say sine of 6.5 degrees over this C sub 2. That is sine of, of gamma sub 2 over its opposite side equals... Again, we'll use what we know where we don't have to round. Sine of 20 degrees 
over 23. If you can use information that is given to you that hasn't been rounded, use that. That's going to come out better. Solving for C sub 2. C sub 2 equals 7.6. I don't like that 6. 7.6 feet. So there we have it. Real quick summary. We have two possible triangles because this height that we found using sine of 20 degrees and the uh, side length of 30. This height is less than A, but it's uh, but A is, is also less than B, so it swings like a fence gate. So you've got this big wide triangle and this skinny triangle. We, uh, we solved for beta sub 1, and we found that to be this triangle here, the one in red, and, and then solved and found the rest of the, the information for the triangle. And then here's the key on finding B sub 2 for what is in green. We said, hey, if, if this angle B sub 1 is 26.5 degrees, then this angle, it, it's like saying um, you could also get the, the same uh, sign of all of this stuff that's in red here. You could get that if the angle were 153.5 degrees. That is, sine of 153.5 degrees would also equal what's all of this stuff. So it would, it would answer this. Okay, and then we went through and, and found the stuff for the rest of the triangle. Okay, there it is, the ambiguous case.